Namaskar everyone. Welcome to this yoga therapy talk series. I'm Devang Shah from Utsav Yoga Institute, Ghatkopar, Mumbai. Uh, we are undergoing a yoga therapy talk series on different, different topics of yoga therapy, touching different aspects of how yoga therapy works. Today's talk is uh, by Sri uh, Raghuram Sir. I welcome you, sir, to the uh, to the talk show today. Uh, <clears throat> we'll be beginning the talk session. I will be uh, inviting uh, Dharasha, madam, for uh, uh, for uh, the introduction of uh, Sri uh, Raghuram, sir. Yes, Dharasha. Yes, sir. Hello. Can you hear me, sir? Yes. Namaste. Yes. Namaste, sir. Good evening, everyone. I'm Dharasha and I welcome all of you on behalf of Utsav Institute, Mumbai. I am here to introduce and to highlight some of the achievements by our today's guest speaker and yoga guru, Mr. N. V. Raghuram, sir. A very nice quotation which is mentioned by sir, which I would like to share here with you all. It is um, one thing that can take away your shraddha for karma is the karma fall or the results. And the other thing which can bring about the ego of karma is also the fala. Very nicely said. Now, it's a great honor for me to introduce you to all a great achiever and the philosopher, Raghuram sir. Talking about him, he has done his bachelor's of civil engineering from regional engineering college Bhopal and worked as an engineer in various departments until 1998, after which he resigned to devote himself and his time for yoga and Indian philosophy. Since 1980, he is associated with Vivekananda Kendra Yoga Anusandana Sanstha, S. Vyasa, Bangalore. Recently, Raghuram sir is internationally coordinator international coordinator and senior yoga guru in s vyasa he is also a chairman of, now not only in india he is well known internationally also raghuram sir has conducted research at middlebroth research at middlebroth uh, general hospital uk and northern center northern colorado allergy and asthma center Fort Collins. He was the member of Indian delegation to the third international conference of ministers and senior officials responsible for physical education and sports organized by UNESCO in 1998. So after knowing so much about him, I'm sure we all are eager to hear from Sir on today's topic, which is yoga as therapy for all-round personality development. Uh, so over to you, sir, Raghuram, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. So welcome you all for the session. And uh, first of all, let me greet you all on the Saturn Navaratri, beautiful 10 days festival and festival for ladies, festival for women, festival for mothers, and uh, the future belongs to this Nari Shakti. And I adore the Nari Shakti on this occasion. And then uh, actually there's another thing also that we say and that if a house has to be healthy, it is because of the women of the house. And probably that might have been a statement given by very many uh, thinkers earlier. But today what we can see is that the number of yoga teachers that we come across doing YAC all over the globe, it's not just only in India, all over the globe, the women population. So that means to say that the health directly is in the hands of women. So therefore that this particular occasion that we are doing yoga therapy on this time, is something very highly significant, and I congratulate you on that. The, uh, 
you know what happened is that yoga though it is born from this country for almost like 10000 years in fact krishna says in bhagavad gita before the creation started i have taught yoga to surya bhagavan and from there the yoga has come that means to say yoga was part of this culture of this society of this particular culture but then what happened is unfortunately in the recent times we had imported the ideas of yoga from the west and there we have taken yoga to be just only physical some asanas and some practices and in fact so much so that even our own our own swamijis our own learned people in the field of philosophy they were saying that i am not interested in yoga physical i am interested in philosophy as if indian philosophy is something different from yoga but actually what the way that bhagavad gita krishna says that whatever that is the philosophy is supposed to be the science and then whereas the technology is what is yoga so yoga is therefore has a practice for the whole personality so when we look at that way then we look at the whole personality of human being not just only physical level but the overall personality level that we look at it so we have a small i have a presentation here to show that how that indian philosophy looked at human being not just only physical body but to see that we exist at five personality level thinking that we are just a physical body is actually underrating ourselves what is there after all a stone is a physical body and a table or a chair is a physical body we are not like that a computer also is a physical body we are something which is beyond that and therefore the way when you look at the indian philosophy looks at human being at all these personality level there is several ways of looking at it but the most important way which is useful for our yoga is the way that looking at human being at all these personality level annamay pranamay manomay vijnanamay anandamay koshas is a very nice discussion that goes on between the student and teacher to actually make the student to understand from his own experience that he is not the physical part therefore the teacher asks the student from your own experience you tell me what you are and as a simple idea that the student comes back to the teacher yes i experience that i am this physical body and which he calls it as arnamay kosha yes it is what normally everybody is experience but then he says that's not sufficient go deep when you go deep a little bit of intellect inter- understand trying to understand deeper you realize that physical body is outside but you are somebody who is making use of this physical body that's why we say that my hand my leg i have seen with my own eyes that means to say eyes are outside as an instrument i am behind it it's right my my pen and then my my computer my laptop my cell phone like that we say that this is also my body that itself shows that you are not the body you are somebody deeper than that a simple argument then what is that who is using these things if you look at it a immediate idea is that it is an energy a like thing which is using this energy is using these things like the way that energy is using the car to move and that energy is petrol like that what we say what we use is what is using this body is the prana therefore the student comes back to teacher and says that i am this pranamay kosha and all throughout this body this prana is there which is making me to do it as long as prana is there i am here the moment prana is gone i am gone so therefore i am the prana is a very simple argument probably he came across a dead body where people are sitting around the dead body crying why are you crying say the person is no more but then whole body is there and he is lying down is it no 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 he is not there anymore body is lying but an hour ago prana is gone so therefore he is gone so as long as prana is there we are here and prana is gone we are gone not only when the dead body you see but even in this living body also wherever prana is not there we are not there like for example we are nails you click the nails there is no prana that's why it is just only the dead body that you take out your hair there is no prana therefore 
you go to the barber and he cuts his hair, it doesn't hurt you because you are not there. We know that it's our own simple experience. It doesn't require any high technology to understand about that. We all know that. But look at the amount of time and money we spent in maintaining hair and nails. It's all housekeeping. Nothing to do with you. So we are supposed to be somebody who is behind this prana. Behind this physical body, that's what is prana. But then the teacher says, find out further. That means to say, physical body is there, prana is also there. Many times you are not there. How? It's a very simple thing is that if your mind is not here, you are not here. If your mind is elsewhere, you are elsewhere. Like for example, you are walking on the road, thinking of something else, mind is elsewhere. And then somebody comes across in front of you and says, Namaste, sir. You didn't even hear that. He greets you. Tomorrow, next day when you meet him, he says that, Are bhai, hum to namaste kiye the. Oh, I was thinking of something else. That means mind is somewhere else. So in my class today, in my lecture today, so many of you are there. I'm so happy. Physically you are there. Prana is also there. I don't know whether your mind is there or not. I hope that you are there. So the student is excited. Actually, Man is supposed to be mind. Mananamite manushya. That's what in Sanskrit we say. But then the teacher says, go further. That means you are not just only the mind, but you are somebody who is driving the mind. If mind goes here and there, don't you tell the mind to be here? Like in the traffic when you are going, suddenly mind wanders here and there because somebody is talking to you. You immediately respond saying that, please don't disturb me now. Let me put my mind on the traffic. So that means to say, you are using the mind. This is what Shankaracharya says. Mind is an instrument in your hand, like the way a sickle is an instrument in the hands of farmer. But then, what is that? Very simple thing is, whatever that manages all of our activities appear to be intellect. You see, today all this technology development, everything has happened because of man. Not any dog or a cat or anything like that has done that. Man has done that. And what is that extraordinary thing about the man which has done this? It is basically the intellect. Therefore, the student comes back to the teacher. I am the intellect. I am the Vijnana Maikosha. Vijnana Dheva Khalimana Bhutana Jayante. Vijnana Na Jatani Jivanti. It is because of the intellect. All this whole creation has taken place, development has taken place. Therefore, I am the Vijnana. But the teacher says, find out further. That means to say, you are not the intellect, you are somebody behind the intellect, subtler than the intellect. Why? A very simple example show, experience shows, many times the intellect says something, advises something, but we don't follow that. Like for example, a diabetic's intellect says, don't eat sweets. But then the moment he sees sweets, he forgets about all those things and runs for the sweet. Our intellect also says very clearly, get up in the morning and do yoga at 6 o'clock. And you put the alarm to ring at 6 o'clock. When the alarm rings at 6 o'clock, what happened to you? You are not there anymore because intellect says, but you are somebody who do not follow the advice. So intellect is only an advisor, not beyond that. And who are we? Why do we see? Why do we continue to see? Why do we do what we do want to do? It is because of ananda, because there is joy. Therefore, deep inside, Upanishad says, your very nature is ananda, and that is what is guiding all your activities. If there is ananda, that means to say, your nature is there, then you follow that. Ananda says that do this, you do that. Ananda says don't do that, you don't do that. So, Ananda Dheva Khalimani Bhutani Jayante Anandena Jata Nidivanti Anandam Prayanti Abhisam Vishanti Therefore, our very nature itself is Ananda. The moment that the student finds out his nature is Ananda, he was established himself in that Ananda. Not only that, Upanishad says that whoever finds that Ananda is your nature, you are established there. Well, it is wonderful, but then what happens to us? 
though our nature is ananda if you look at yourself it looks like that we are not happy upanishad says your nature itself is happiness but then why are we not happy if nobody is happy in fact everybody says that my happiness is somewhere else i go on a vacation next week then i will be happy and particularly today people say wow what a misery once this covid goes away then we will be happy that means to say we are all away from our own nature at every personality level we have come away from our nature at the physical body level our nature was to be relaxed look at the children they are always relaxed they are always relaxed they walk relaxed run relaxed they fall relaxed that's why when they fall they don't break their bones because that they are so relaxed so but whereas we as we have grown up tension is the way we have come away from our nature body is tense you know look at the simple example of the children every child all over the world globe when you put them in the lying down position and the simple pastime is every child picks up the toe and puts it in the mouth both the toes in the mouth so that the body becomes like a ball because muscles are relaxed joints are relaxed everything is relaxed and that's a relaxed position for a child to put the toes in the mouth and we were also like that when we were children but as we have grown up people come to the yoga class and when they say bend forward pada hastasana touch the toes i mean there are some people who cannot see the toes because of madhya pradesh prosperity but then those who can see the toes they say those toes as if it is somebody else's is <laughs> your own toes i say how can i touch it my hands don't go below the knees why because my joints are tense my back is tense my back, my waist is tense tension is the way we have come away from our nature but then as a child you are putting your toes in your mouth now what happened he says that i can do the social service i can put my toes in somebody else's mouth you know mutual cooperation are tension is the way we have come away from our nature at the physical body that's what this table shows a natural state is our relaxation tension is the way we have come away from our nature at the prana level our nature was to be slow look at every child never in a hurry the child walks slowly they put the child in the bathroom he never comes out of it put them into the closet to settle the dress he will never pick up any dress or she will be tossing over the dress mother says fast i am sure that no child is fast similarly mother puts a spoonful of food in the mouth child child goes round and round and round after 10 minutes mother says open the mouth the food is still sitting there mother says eat fast no child eats fast whereas we were also like that as we have grown up today we are so fast we are so fast that every street corner we have fast food center that shows that how much that we have speeded up in food eating that we, that's in every activity we are fast every activity we are unnecessarily fast as if somebody is driving us at the mind level a calm state of mind was our nature the child is always calm so that means to say god has not made a mistake as making us an agitated mind our mind he gave us a calm mind but we created an agitated state of mind. we are worried and that's what is the agitation we are worried about everything and anything if there is nothing to worry we sit down and worry why am i not worrying about anything am i forgetting about anything not only we worry we want others also to worry wife wants husband to worry husband wants wife to worry in prashanti at our center that a husband and wife came to me for counseling initially for 10 minutes both of them were sitting together afterwards wife told husband you go out i want to talk to raghuram personally and then poor husband fellow went out and then she said raghuram ji my main worry is my husband doesn't worry you see he doesn't worry that became your worry this is how we have come away from our nature at the intellect level emotion level imbalance is the way we have come away from our natural state deep at the bliss level at the anandamaya level 
our nature was to be in harmony it's not only our nature the whole nature is in harmony look at anything in the nature the plant roots are in the soil flowers and foliage in the sky look at the beautiful harmony in that an orange fruit when you take it the bitter seed and the sweet fruit born together grow to the fullness together the seed does not disturb the fruit fruit does not disturb the seed such a wonderful harmony that they have everywhere in the nature you only see the harmony and we were also the nature therefore we had that harmony when we were born but as we have grown up absolutely we have come away from that harmony a simple harmony we think of harmony between hunger and eating and look at the way we eat because not because we are hungry we eat because the item looks very sweet nice looks very good or it is time to eat or if i don't eat now and another important i pay for that so i have to eat all this kind of reasons for eating but not because hunger and eating are together there is no harmony the same way exertion exhaustion and the sleep they are not in harmony that's why we suffer from that our systolic diastolic pressures are not in harmony what a unfortunate thing that is disharmony is the way that we have come away from our nature so at all these personality level we have come away from our nature another very interesting fact about this is our nature itself is health that's why in indian philosophy health is known as swastha in sanskrit and that's what is adapted in most of the languages swa means self stha means being when i am in myself that's what is health when i am away from myself that's what is sickness so therefore relax slowness calmness was our own nature that's what is swastha tension speed agitation away from our nature that's what is sickness so this itself will give us an idea that what should i have to, what should i do for the sake of health go back to your own nature don't have to do anything sickness we have come away from our nature health we have to go back to our nature that's a very simple thing and to go back to our nature we don't require any reason to be healthy you don't require any reason to have sickness you have to have a reason i mean it's a very simple logic i'm talking about we like for example you meet a friend after a long time and then that person says that ask you ask that person how are you doing that person says i am fine you don't ask the question oh my god why are you fine are <laughs> to be fine is your own nature ha huh, if sickness is there then you ask why do you have that sickness like for example yeah mulla nasiruddin i met him on the way and then mulla asked me after a while that ragura how are you doing i said i am not doing well why i have a severe headache then mulla asked me why do you have headache i said you are talking to me the reason is there itself see sickness has to have a reason health does not require a reason so going back to our health our own nature is what is the definition of yoga given by patanjali tatha drashtuhu swarupe avasthanam drashtu is the practitioner swarupa he is established in himself tatha drashtuhu swarupe avasthanam but then how to go back to my nature at the body level physical level relaxation is the way that we go back to our nature that's what is the definition of asanas in fact patanjali gives the definition of asana sthira sukham asanam you see sukha we know is relaxation and not only that further next sutra he further emphasizes that saying that prayatna shaithilya ananta samapatyabhyam prayatna is effort and then shaithilya effortlessly you are staying in the state of relaxation that's what is the asana similarly at the prana level patanjali's definition of pranayama is shwasa prachwasa gatir vicheda pranayama gati means speed vicheda cut down the speed see how beautifully patanjali has made it so clear it is like he has opened the banana and gave us the fruit such a simple way similarly a conscious process of calming the mind is the idea of meditation a conscious process of correcting our intellect wisdom and that's what is jnana yoga 
correcting our imbalances and go to the balanced state of emotions is what is bhakti yoga when you do all these different varieties of yoga at all these personality level underlying all these yogas is in every activity you bring in that blissful nature of yours that's what is karma yoga so all these yogas are helping us to go back to our nature therefore the definition of yoga is a conscious journey to go back to our nature yoga is therefore not doing it is undoing it's undoing look at the way tension speed agitations are all doing relaxation slowness calmness are the state of being so somebody has given a very beautiful poetic definition yoga is a conscious journey from doing to being in fact we are wrongly called as human beings we should actually be called as human doings when you do yoga you become a human being that's a simple thing yoga is nothing mystic yoga is nothing like acrobatic posture i mean people have given such a wrong understanding because of the western borrowed idea of yoga more complicated posture you are a more advanced yogi this is how unfortunately they give that kind of idea in fact i was seeing there somebody has given a uh, idea that i i was looking at the book stall and then there was one book called on yoga for pregnancy and on that book cover there was a beautiful model very slim uh lanky model very slim slim model she was in most acrobatic posture and that picture was there when i looked at that book i was really sweating myself look at the posture how can a pregnant lady do this kind of a posture and that is given on the face of the book then i thought convinced myself saying that maybe you know that is right because a pregnant lady full pregnancy when she looks at that picture itself she will have a child birth she doesn't have to do anything for child birth it will just happen like that this is how people have wrong notion about yoga at least we in our culture because the yoga is the way that we have arrived at we should understand yoga at all these personality level now coming back to our nature is what is yoga and this yoga therapy has a place like this that you can see in this spiral model i have given the various modalities of therapy in fact health is our own nature in fact world health organization the top of the voice they were crying saying that let us change the definition of health from sickness to definition of health from sickness to well be therefore they gave the definition that health is not absence of sickness but it's a positive well be that means focus is health and but the unfortunately the whole practice of modern medicine is focused on the sickness not on health whole focus is on the sickness medical profession is on sickness and the hospitals are about the sickness everywhere it is sickness that's what is the idea sickness is the goal and actually you are treating the sickness not health in fact that's why i are asthma diabetes these are the names that you know about we say a patient person how is so and so is oh the diabetic patient that means to say you identify him by the sickness that he has mulla nasruddin a friend came to mulla nasruddin and said that my uncle is suffering from diarrhea i went to several doctors and there is difficulty and because so i came to you mulla said that yes i give it up i give a medicine give this medicine for 3 days a day two times a day so that diarrhea will stop and that person took that medicine went away a month later mulla met his friend in the market and asked how is your uncle doing the friend told replied mulla saying that my uncle is no more he died mulla asked him it's all right he died but did his diarrhea stop or not because my medicine is for the sake of diarrhea not for your uncle this is what the medicine is all about the focus has to be changed towards health and if you change core is health our own core is health our nature is health 
that's why in this graph in this uh, spiral you see that the core is health and then and that is what is of our nature and look at the way from the bottom of this that when you go up the arrow shows upwards and then yoga is the first important step to see that how you go back to your nature so you have come away from your nature first thing that means to say primary therapy main therapy should be that you give yoga so that somebody can go back to his nature that's why yoga therapy should become the main line therapy when yoga cannot help then we try to go for a natural methods and this is what nature also adapts so look at your dog or a cat when the stomach ache is upset they just do the fasting and the fasting will bring them back or if it is not sufficient that they will take a lot of water and then they puke it out they vomit and everything comes out and then they become healthy these are all the techniques which are there in the naturopathy further when you go away from your nature then what happens is that we give some herbs we give some natural ingredients it's not any artificial chemicals but the natural ingredient and all those ingredients are the things which can have some therapeutical value and this is what is ayurveda in fact look at the way that indian medicine is called as ayurveda the very meaning gives the knowledge of the health ayuhu is health so our focus is on health not on sickness and i ayurveda that means to say thousands of years ago our focus was on the health as the way that world health organization said not on the sickness and we gave all these herbs and various combinations and all that which are supposed to be natural combination which will help you to get back to your nature so therefore ayurveda is the next step only when we cannot bring you back we go far away farther away in the spiral away from our core then maybe for a short period of time we may have to take some chemical and that chemical is what is modern medicine so that like for example my headache is so much that i cannot practice yoga i cannot practice naturopathy then i say all right take me a small like, let me take some small little paracetamol which will take care of my immediate headache but later on that to gain my health i will go back to my yoga my naturopathy and all those things so therefore modern medicine is the fifth step in the management of fourth step in the management of your health otherwise health is your own nature health comes from healing nobody gives us healing healing is our own nature you know look at the way that a surgeon when you have a fracture or something like that he will put the bone pieces together he will put a plaster and he will only say put a sling and say don't move this hand so that the bone heals by itself bone has a healing power therefore that is what is going back to our nature so therefore when the modern medicine also fails then we say whatever that affected part is there we have to remove it that's what is surgery so when you look at this particular schematic diagram of various modalities surgery takes a last portion but even today this morning that there was one back pain patient came he said every doctor i met they say that you have to undergo surgery i asked them what does mri show mri doesn't show that there is something wrong with my back but then i have a back pain therefore they wanted to do the surgery you see their first resort is surgery and when somebody resists that surgery okay i'll give you some tablets pain killer but then finally fortunately came to yoga therapy therefore basically the correction is going back to your nature and that's what is yoga this way when you look at it the future of the medicine is yoga therapy because now people have understood our body is something which is very precious and in this precious body i don't want to subject it to any chemicals like the way that we take so much care in the food that we item you know people go for organic food organic material today these days that people don't use even the fertilizers because they say that it should be harmful chemicals that are there in the fertilizers or even the insecticide pesticides we don't use it because that we are health conscious so while taking food we are health conscious we don't want to go for junk food in the lifestyle that we are going to be health conscious in this way 
that when we are that health conscious let's see even in the medicines also let's go to the health conscious in the sense that as minimum as possible we subject ourselves to the modern medicine we are not against the modern medicine we are not against the health of people but we want to say that empower people with this health this is what is the modality of yoga therapy the future generations they would like to go back to the health by their own yoga practice it's a spiral yoga is a spiral upward journey it's a practice from the physical mental intellectual and spiritual sickness to freedom from sickness to positive health life grows from the material to spiritual now this way when you practice not just only at the body level but at all the personality level when we do it that's what is real health of yoga this is what world health organization say our health should be physical mental social and spiritual well being at all these personality level and not the sickness so when we look at that way then look at the anandamaya kosha spirituality is our own nature and what is that we have seen that what happens at the anandamaya kosha is supposed to be that we are in harmony and today look at the level of the harmony in the world the world is away from this harmony very important thing is that the kind of fight going on the kind of disturbances going on two people in under one roof they cannot live in harmonious way why because we have this harmony within us and the same disharmony manifests outside so we find fault with some when two individuals are two different people why not we just accept them as they are why not we have that idea of acceptance this rising from the level of complaint to acceptance of the way that we become spiritual not only acceptance which we appreciate in the name of in the name of uh, religion that we fight in the name of border that we fight in the name of man and woman that we fight in the name of education we fight in the name of opinions that we fight we keep fighting all the time because we don't have harmony today in the world what is that what is more required is a health which has this harmony as an integral part of it that's why world health world health organization added in the health what is called as spiritual well being as a part of it and only the way that we can bring in that spiritual well being component in the health part is by introducing yoga therapy as a part of our health management of all the various applications of yoga the most immediate concern of yoga application in our day to day life is this aspect of it let us look at human being as an integral part when we say integral medicine of yoga or holistic medicine of yoga it is not that we apply various different medic, medic, medical practices together you know ayurveda this veda that veda and all that this pati that pati but really look at human being as an integral being that means to say my body my mind my intellect everything works in harmony if i'm just walking it's not that my body is walking but together with my body my prana is there my mind is there my intellect is there together with that we are doing so my simple suggestion for everybody is when we practice yoga whatever practice of yoga that you do you do it manasa vata karmana you practice that yoga with a holistic personality approach that is the right way of doing it yoga when you don't do that way it's nothing but a physical exercise let us not convert yoga to a very normal simple physical exercise it's a very important practice that we do let's understand this yoga in that way as a holistic personality approach and this is the message krishna has given to arjuna arjuna did not require lack physical fitness but what happened was the psychology was disturbed and it was not co- cooperating at the body level then he wanted a cooperation at the soul personality level krishna has given the greatest of the yoga text that we have that's what is bhagavad gita so with these ideas the holistic approach of yoga let us try to practice this let bring about this in the case of this yoga therapy series of lectures let us try to understand the holistic way we become the leaders of the world in the way that exists in the field of yoga 
understanding yoga in a holistic way, let us lead the world in a proper way in the right direction. So with these few words, with the parting giving final message, essence of the whole thing, let us have this confidence to say that our nature is health. That means to say you are positive in your health. That is the first aspect of it. Our nature is not sickness. Our nature is health. Sickness is something which comes and goes. That's all. And second thing is we are not just from the physical being. We are the holistic being. At the gross level, we are the physical body. But at the subtlest level, we are the divinity. We are the spirituality. That's what Swami Vivekananda gave us a message 150 years ago. Each soul is potentially divine. Let us have that divinity within us, understand and proceed further. And that divinity is what is health and what is our nature, what is the spirit. With these few words, I thank you all for giving me such a wonderful opportunity to share my ideas with you. I hope these ideas really benefit you. Thank you so much. Namaskar, sir. This was a, such a wonderful uh, session that has enlightened us for understanding how yoga is working at a holistic level at the physical, mental, emotional, psychological, as well as social and the spiritual level. And how well yoga can be used for the incorporation of a holistic personality development and will taking uh, you know, into consideration of all the aspects from the Upanishad and the Bhagavad Gita and various other texts. How beautifully you have explained us and guided us for the way how uh, we look at the overall personality development. And this is what is has been the background theory of the entire SPSA education system. And this has really guided lots and lots of students all across the world. Uh, uh, for all those speakers who are connected, let me just give you a short introduction of SPSA. It is one of the leading yoga organization in the world who are doing the research in the yoga therapy part. And they have an excellent yoga laboratory also, which are, you know, trying to prove how scientifically we can use yoga as a therapeutic tool and what are the basis, how it works. So they are doing all the experiments and they are finding out the basis of how yoga works. And uh, we all are, you know, we all take, can take up a chance whenever we are in Bangalore to visit this wonderful campus. You know, it is like that Pavan Bhumi where you go and you can feel that, that wonderful vibrations of that place, how much, you know, uh, energetic you feel in that, uh, in that atmosphere, uh, in the sun India of uh, Sri Raghuram Ji, uh, then uh, Nagaratna Didi and uh, Nagendra Guruji and all the other team members at Vyasa. So uh, thank you very much, sir. And, and uh, I thank uh, you. What I would like to give is that now that lockdown situation is removed, people huh. can come here so that I invite you all to a very possible even for a short period of time to visit and see what is the work going on here. Thank you, Devan. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, everyone, those who are interested, there are so many courses done of uh, Vyasa, uh, which are, you know, right from YIC, that is a yoga instructor course, then the diploma, then the graduation level, that is BSc in yoga, and then MSc in PhD in yoga. There are various, various, uh, you know, courses, and there is a uh, Ayurveda and Naturopathic College as well. Uh, we are the center for Vyasa in Mumbai. We are also conducting the YIC courses in Mumbai. So in case those who are wanting to connect to Vyasa can take up this chance to do some courses of uh, Vyasa like the YIC in Mumbai itself as well. So I take all of you, uh, I take this opportunity to thank all of you to connect to us uh, and uh, Sri uh, Raghuram sir as well for giving us such a wonderful guidance. Thank you, sir. Our tomorrow's topic is also uh, the... Uh, it will be from 6 to 7, uh, and it will be uh, delivered by Dr. Sri Ganesh Rao, sir. Uh, the topic uh, is already with you all. So uh, please connect to us uh, tomorrow again at 6 to 7. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Shubhanavratri. Thank you.